Welcome everybody to our February demo for the Society of West Coast Artists. My name is Jim Stinger. I will be your demo artist today. Uh, I'm the president of the San Francisco chapter of SWA. And before I start, I would like to announce that Lillian Wu will be giving a Chinese brush painting workshop on March 5th and 6th. That's a weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And the signups are online if you want to participate in that workshop. We need more signups if we're to have that workshop, so we don't want to cancel it. So go ahead and sign up for that workshop. Uh, we will have other workshops in the future as well. And so keep looking at our website for announcements of those forthcoming workshops. So today I have the pleasure of demonstrating fish prints, which maybe kind of sounds strange to people. How come you use a fish to print, right? That's rather odd. But this really is an ancient technique and it started by the Japanese back several centuries ago, maybe the 1500s, 1600s, some, sometime around that. And it was, it was started by Japanese fishermen who wanted to document their fishing catch. And this was back before the days of smartphones and before the days of cameras so they couldn't record their catch that way so what they decided to do was to when they had their catch they would take some of the fish and they would lay them down on newspaper and put sumi ink on them paint them with sumi ink and then take a piece of rice paper and place it on top and mold it to the fish and you would get a fish print and this was their record of their catch. And, and I don't know if it was used for bookkeeping or what it was used for, but it was, it was a record of, of what they caught. And, and I'm sure it was used in commerce somehow. Um, so anyway, th that is the origin of fish prints. And I kind of stumbled upon it one time a few years ago, I don't remember how, I uh, got to know the, the uh, idea of fish prints. And then more recently, I took a trip to uh, French Polynesia and uh, decided that for a project to do with the daughter of a friend of Peace Corps friend of my wife's who was along on the trip, I would do fish prints. And what better place to do fish prints than French Polynesia, right? There should be lots of fish there. People catch fish, they bring them in to the harbor, they, they have them for sale at stands and so on. We could not find a whole fish, <laughs> which is what you need for a fish print because you're doing this right after you catch it, right? So it has to have the head and the tail and the fins and all that in, on it. Um, so we looked and looked and we looked in the markets and of course all the fish in the markets was prepared. It was cut into fillets or whatever. Then one day we were driving along and Maylin's mom, this is Maylin, by the way, our young audience member, uh, spied a, a fish hanging on a bracket at the side of the road. And it was a whole fish. And she said, wait, stop, there's a fish. <laughs> okay, and so we, we turned around and we went to where this fish was hanging and this old gray fisherman came out because he saw us there. And, and we asked him if it was for sale. He said, yes, it was. And we asked him how much. And it was a thousand Polynesian francs, which translates to about $10. And you know, we asked him if it was OK if we bought it. And he said, sure. And then he went back into his freezer and he pulled out a, a flying fish, frozen flying fish, about that big. And he gave that to us as well. So now we had two fish for a project, right? So we, we went back to the bungalow and we did our fish prints project right there. And, and it, was a, it was great fun. We had a great time. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to do some fish prints. And by the way, the Japanese term for it is gyotaku. G-Y-O-T-A-K-U. Gyo, G-Y-O stands for fish or it translates to fish, and tapu translates to either prints or paper or something like that. So fish prints. So 
first thing you have to do is find yourself a fish. Okay, that's that's the challenge. It has to be a whole fish, okay? Preferably not clean. Okay, you want one that hasn't been gutted. Because when you gut a fish, it creates a pocket in the bottom that kind of has flaps on it and it makes it harder to print it, okay? So I found the best place to find whole fish that haven't been cleaned is Ranch 99 Market. And there's one down in Mountain View, which is the one I went to, on the corner of El Camino and Grant Road. They have a big spread of whole fish on ice and they aren't clean and all you have to do is pick out the ones you want and they'll just put them up in, in plastic for you and you pay for them and there you go. So. There's one in Foster City too. There's one in Foster City, okay, okay. So let me see what we've got here. Okay, we're gonna start with some small fish and why don't you put the other camera on so we can see what I've got here these are let me, let me find out these are horse mackerel split and this was like these these fish yeah holy mackerel <laughs> These, these fish were actually bought at the Nijia market, uh, which is also close to the Ranch 99 that I went to. It's also on uh, El Camino and Grant Road. It's a Japanese market. And we found a package of these small ones, okay? Um, and so I bought them. And then, let's see if I can find it. Oh. Got lots of fish. I'm looking for a particular one. Ooh. Okay, this one. This is one. Yes. Okay. So this one is a black sea green. And where should I put it? Put it, put it here. Maybe I'll put it here. Okay. This one I also got at the Japanese market, the Nijia market, but it is clean, gutted. So you see here, it has this pocket that where they took the innards out and it creates these two flaps, okay, which are hard to manage when you're going to do a fish print. So I'm not going to use this for a fish print, okay, even though I bought it hoping to use it for fish print, I had it in case I didn't find any whole fish that weren't clean, but I'm not gonna use this one. So I'm gonna put this one away. I just wanted to show you what a cleaned fish looks like. It still has the head and the tail on it. Would, would you like to do a smell test? <laughs> This, this particular one is probably about a week old. <laughs> it's not surprising it has an odor to it. So I'll put it in here and I'm gonna put some, some cloths over it so hopefully it won't smell as much. That's the other thing. You have these fish, if they get too old, they get very smelly. So it can be a very smelly process. Um, so yeah, you have to be able to take the smell of, of old fish. Um, okay, so let me see. Okay, here now these are the ones from the uh, these were from Nijia. That one was from Nijia. These are the ones from the the uh, Ranch Ninety Nine. These little guys, and again, this is not clean. These little guys are called croakers. They certainly did. <laughs> They croak, yes. Okay. So these, these are good for small prints. Okay, and, and you can do multiple prints on a single sheet with those. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, the, the other thing you want to look for when you're getting your fish, if you want to do fish prints with them, 
is the flatter the fish, the better. Because if you have a big puffy round fish, it's gonna be hard to get the, the rice paper all the way around it. Whereas with a flat fish, it's pretty easy to, because you wanna get the fins and the tail in as well as the body. Okay, so now I've got some others here. Uh, let me see, one of these is a pompano. And I believe, I believe it's this one, I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, Put this here. Oh, nice. It's a beautiful Gorgeous. fish. Okay, beautiful fish. The, the problem is this one doesn't ink very well. The ink doesn't stay on it very well. So I think I'm not going to do a fish print on this, but I will hold it aside and maybe we'll try later just to see if it works or not. It's so smooth. Yeah, it's very smooth. And I think that's the reason it doesn't print very well. Now, whether the Japanese have these problems or not, I don't know. I always need to ask them. But uh, you know, they just had to catch the right fish so they could do the, the printing. OK. Uh, we have the croaker. I think this is what's called a white pomfret, P-O-M-F-R-E-T. Okay, it's another beautiful fish. Mm -hmm. Okay, we will do a fish print on that one. And lastly, I have a, a uh, sea bream. Now, don't hold me to the names of these because I may have switched them around, but here's another pretty fish. Okay, wow. and you notice they're, they're all pretty flat. Okay, except for these croakers, maybe they're a little too round, we'll see. But these guys are pretty flat. Another interesting fish you could use would be sole. Okay, sole lie on the bottom of the ocean, and over the years they developed two eyes on one side. So the, the two eyes are on the side that's up, and that would make a kind of an interesting print as well. Okay, so let's get started. These fish, by the way, have been washed. And all you do to wash them is run them under water and make sure that all of the slimy stuff is off of them because you want to make sure they're clean to, to be able to, uh, so for the ink to adhere to them. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put on some gloves. Good idea to put on gloves when you're using Sumi ink. Do they always use just the ink? Say it again. Do they always use just the sumi ink? Or do they do other? Um... The, the, the Japanese back in the day would use sumi ink only, okay? okay? But I am going to show you other possible media to use for your fish prints. And in fact, here is one that was done with acrylic. Oh, no. Okay, this is one that was done in French Polynesia and I framed it. And this, oh, look, this way. Okay, hold it up more. It's kind of glary, that's the problem. There we go. Okay. It's laying flat on the screen. Yeah, it's just getting into the camera. Okay. Okay, anyway, you can, you can see it directly here. Okay. Um, and so that that shows you one way to mount your fish print. Okay. Another way is something like this, where I've taken a canvas that's what is it about 14 by 18, something like that, or 16 by 20. Okay. And this is this print was done on rice paper. Oh. But you guys can look at it. Okay, but up for the people out. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, so this this was done on rice paper. And I then mounted it on the canvas. So now it's ready for hanging. Kasumi ink when it dries is waterproof. Okay, so this is another way to mount your, your fish prints. 
So no. how did you do the I? No, I was just going to say that. <laughs> Very good. Thank you, guy. When you do the fish print, you don't put paint on the eye. You leave the eye alone. And that's because you don't want the eye to print because you're going you're gonna to do it later. OK? Using colored inks or color, acrylic colors, whatever, to make the eye, well, OK. If you show me the other camera. Oh. Blowing. There we go. Okay. You see this, this particular fish has a very red eye. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you want to capture that, but after you've done the print by using acrylics or inks or whatever to paint that eye in. So when you make the fish print, you don't put any sumi ink over the eye. Okay. So here I use acrylics to paint in the eye after I've done the fish print. Okay, another way to display your fish print is in some sort of sleeve like this. Okay, or you can have a portfolio or something like that that you can that has leaves that you can put put your prints in. And this one has prints on, on each side. Okay. So I've done several of these fish prints with the Sumi ink. And that's what we're going to do now. So let me start with this guy. Put these aside. Get them out of the way. Boy, the smell up here is very fragrant. <laughs> Okay. This over here. Get this out of the way. So I was freshly caught now. Uh, how many days old? You think the fish before you? Think? How many? How many days? Yeah. Um, I'm Is guessing it, they're pretty fresh. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Um, they haven't been frozen, so they have to be pretty fresh. Okay. Okay, when you buy them in the market. Okay. okay. All right, so I'm going to put my ink. This is Sumi ink in this little bottle. Where did you get the ink? Uh, this particular ink I got at University Art. You can get it at any art yeah, store. Okay. So you want to pour. A little bit in your, your either a palette or a plate. It also comes in bigger containers like this that have a little spout. Okay, and I'm using a very cheap brush. Okay, you don't need one of your expensive watercolor brushes to do this. In fact, you don't want to use one of your expensive brushes because it'll ruin it. So. Uh, just a very cheap brush you, that you get from the hardware store. Okay, now I'm going to try and get some of these fins straightened out, get the tail kind of straightened out, the fin there. There's a fin here, but that will print. I just get it flat. Okay, and you see some of the ink on my gloves is already getting on the fish. Okay, so what I want to do is, by the way, this is newsprint that I've got down here on the table to protect the table. I just got a whole bunch of newsprint and I use that for you know the messes that I create. <clears throat> so now I just want to dip my brush in and start painting. Okay, and I don't want to do the eye. Go around the eye. And you only need to paint the top half, of course. You want to work fairly quickly. Because this will, stuff will dry. So I paint the bottom. Get 
the fins. Tail. Okay. Got good coverage. Okay. We're ready to print except in some areas there's too much ink. And you don't see the, the details of the, the scales and the skin and all that. So the next step is to look at your fish and decide where the ink might be a little too thick. And where it is a little too thick, you go in with a paper towel and just dab it to get it thinner. There's less ink on it. So more of the fish characteristics show up. Okay. We want all these characteristics to be showing. That looks pretty good. Okay. So now I'm going to move the fish over because I've got all this ink on the paper here on the main surface. And now I'm going to take some rice paper. Do you need a hand? Yeah. Okay, if you get a little bit of ink on the rice paper, that's okay, it's kind of artsy. Okay, so then you try and center it as best you can. Lay it down, and then just gently press it all over. Is it can... waterproof or is it? it? When it dries, it'll be waterproof. Okay, what about if you get it on yourself? Do you, um, do you, use water you, can, you can wash it off with water okay. generally. Yeah, that's very <clears throat> You want to be careful not to push too much or pat it on down too much. Once you get the whole thing. And you have your fish print. Okay. Put it down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I don't want to put it on there because. Cool. Put it here. Now, Jim, when you like the color of the fish like that, when they're so deep, do you let it dry in that color or not? Kind of fish print. Um, there's no, the, there's no color in this print. No, but you have that fish that has a lot of. Can you do the sumi thing and then add color? You, you could, yes. After you do the print, you could go in with acrylics or whatever and paint in the color. Yes. Just like you're, you're going to paint in the eye. Okay. Okay. Now you notice I have some really dark spots here. Okay. And that's because either I had too much ink there or I padded it too hard. Okay. Or too long. So You'll, you'll get splotches like that, and that's okay, as long as it's not too big an area. Okay, but that's not too bad a print. Okay, so let's try another one. As you can see, it's a very messy process. Well, do you reading the thing first? Say it again. Can you re ink that same fish? Can I do it again? Mm -hmm. Yes. Or are you going to re ink it though? Oh, no, I'm going to use a different fish. Okay, so you could re ink that. Fish. I could re ink that. In fact, the, the prints that I showed you were all done with one fish. Okay, okay. okay they were done. This is a bronzino. Okay. So, this was, a, this was the flying fish that we got in French Polynesia. Color. So if you uh, took another print on that same fish, is there enough ink on there, or could you have a lighter color? Or... Are, you, are you asking if, if I were to print it now, would yeah. there be enough ink on it? Or if you just took a spray bottle and sprayed it, would that? Let's find out. 
I can get it. Rice paper. And I want to thank Lillian for providing the, the rice paper. Is this the Schwann paper? Yeah, Schwann paper? yeah, okay. So if I put it down again, you might get a better print because there's less ink on it. But it also could be a dried in some places. For you saying the back side. Oh, so, gently. You get a lighter print. Uh, let me put it down. Cool. Very cool. But, I'm sorry. He looks mean. Mean. <laughs> yeah, he does. You could really see where the eye is. Yes, you can see the eye sock. Definitely. Because I didn't put any ink on there. Does everybody know where Pacific Catch is the restaurant? Does yeah, there's fish paintings on the wall. Oh, there is. Are there? Yeah, and if Judy wouldn't go there, she hated the fish paintings. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me show you something. That looks better. Yes, it does. Yvonne turned me on to this artist, Mark McAfee. Oh, okay. I don't know if any of you have heard of him. Um, but he does some fish printing in his work, okay? And I printed out some of the, the paintings he's done that have fish in them. Uh, let's see if I turn this around like that. See, there's one, you've got two like perch. They're kind of, let me see if I zoom in. Where's my control? Yeah. And so he works on UFO quite a bit. So I wonder if UFO would be, would, I guess, no, it has to be a fish. Two fish. I don't know his technique, and I don't even know if this is on UFO, but it probably is. Looks like it is. Okay. Anyway, so uh, here's another one of his. And the fish is a big part of the painting, right? Whereas before, the other one, it was kind of more subtle. And then I like this one. Oh, yeah. Let's see that go out there. Did you unpin me? No. Okay. Oops, oh, do you want me to unpin you? No. Okay. Okay, so anyway, you see there are other artists too that have done fish prints in their work and, and it can turn out very cool. So rather than having just a sim simple fish print in your painting, you can add, you can enhance it with colors and other things. Okay, so I was going to so maybe that's enough of that. You get the idea. So first of all, does it dry pretty quickly? Yes, it does. Yeah, it doesn't take very long to dry. I'm gonna get rid of some of these sheets here. Can that just go somewhere says an animal can eat it? Something if you rinse the ink Say it again. Can that fish that you use this one? Can it be rinsed off and given to an animal to, so it doesn't just go in the back? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, or you can clean it and eat it yourself. Oh, okay. Okay, but you want to make sure you get all of the sumi ink off. How do you get that off? <laughs> Are you, are you the class clown? <laughs> okay. 
So we're going to take one of these little croakers. In a bag. Your croaker has to move. Oh, it's too far over. Well, that's because I zoomed in. Oh, okay. yeah. So what I need to do is zoom out. Oh, but it looks so beautiful. Yeah, it's good this way. Yeah. It looks good? Yeah. yeah. Maybe that way. Okay. So just pay attention to your monitor. Yes, OK. Beautiful. <laughs> That's the nice thing about this roof thing. If you have a pile of it, you can just take away the ones that are dirty and have clean sheets to work with. Okay, so we're going to try something here. I've got this this uh, this canvas that I've done some colors on. Okay, so we're going to put sumi ink on this guy and, and try and make a print on here. So let's see if I put that right there. Need more ink. That's pretty rough. Are there other colors of semi ink or no? It's only black. I've only seen it in black, okay. but we're also going to play with some colored inks and acrylics and see what happens with that. Got my head in the way, okay. <laughs> too, too many variables here. Now, this is going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to be putting this on top of that. I'm going to be putting this on top of that. Okay. So it's not quite the same. I want to make sure I get all the excess ink off. Mm -hmm. So we'll see the, the scales and other parts of it. Okay, now the, the drum roll, please. <laughs> Okay, and because it's not flat, I'm going to roll it. Make sure these pins get down. Mouth. Well, I would say that didn't work. <laughs> Oops, let me put it down here. Okay, you can sort of see some of the scales and the, and the tail, but. Did you wipe that off now when you try to do it? Or no? Um, yes, I believe I could because this is acrylic. Okay. Okay. So let me take a clean one. Love these questions. Okay, probably what I need to do is wet this rag and take it off that way. And by now it's probably dried a little bit. So I. Do you want me to take, take you some wet, a wet cloth? Oh, okay. 
Thank you. We'll see if it gets any more off. But that's the challenge of using something other than rice paper. Rice paper is very pliable, flexible, thin, so you can get it onto the fish very easily, right? The rice paper over when it's oh, oh, I see. Like, like that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but you wouldn't see much of the color, right? It would kind of block it. Yeah, this is not coming off. Mm -hmm. This is dried. Yeah. Ooh, that's cool. Okay. You know, the way that you put the fish on the canvas there, yeah. that's how I thought you were going to be doing the prints on the right on the rice paper. Yes. So it was yes. pretty cool to see that you put the rice paper over and manipulated. Yeah. So okay. So what I think I want to try now is to do the same thing. And you know, it, it, it's gonna have this kind of messing things up, but maybe it won't. Um, I'm going to take some acrylic and not this fish, but the other one, and I'm going to paint it with acrylic and then try putting it down and see what happens. And maybe if I put more paint on, then more will come off onto the canvas. Okay, let's see if that happens. That's the other croaker, right? <laughs> okay, so if we go to the other camera, and now that aside, yes. And by the way, I'm experimenting here. I'm just trying different things. So you're you're guinea pigs, but what I've got here are metallic acrylics or metallic colors. There's a copper, a silver. Okay. So now if I get one of these eggshell or egg crates. And let me see what colors do I want? This is a Silver, yeah, okay, and copper. That is a white. There's a bronze and gold. So maybe we'll do three of them silver, copper, and gold, and see what happens. Silver. Put this over here. You can kind of maybe see what I'm doing. Have to keep watching the monitor. There's the copper. It's a gold. Okay, now again, you don't want to use your good brushes. I got this very used brush. Happens to be a round brush, but I think that'll be okay. So now, let me put this aside and bring this more in here. <clears throat> I'm just going to paint it with these acrylics. So I have to decide where I want each color. And you could kind of try and follow the color of the fish. It has kind of silverish coloring at the top and around the eye. So maybe I'll do the belly in the, the, the copper. No, we won't do that. Thin. Okay, now you notice that it's not adhering as well as the sumiyang did. But if I get enough on here, 
should be all right. Bring a water container, so we'll just use a paper oh. towel. And a little silver in the top water. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, the brush will stick in there. Gold pen. Tail. We've got some other fins here too. I don't know if they're going to stick out for me. Try it. Okay. Put this down. <laughs> Flip it like a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Move your canvas into the. Yep. Okay. There. Thank you. Oh, more of a fish. Yeah, kind of abstract, right? But that's the sort of thing you can do is incorporate your fish print in with yeah, the, the abstract painting or whatever that you've got. It looks like we saw the bottom. Yeah, you can, you can see some of the fins and the tail, obviously. Um, I can't really see the eye. Well, it's kind of in here, I think. So that kind of worked. How are we doing on time here? Okay. So I just want to show you one more thing before the break. And that would be um, doing a fish print on watercolor paper. Ooh. Okay. So we'll put this aside.
Your apron's very appropriate. <laughs> Let's get paid. gave it to me. So it's a very prized apron. Okay. Uh, let me do these out here. Right. Sorry. <laughs> this is dinner tonight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're going to have a fish feast, a fish fry. Everybody's welcome. <laughs> we got lots of fish here. You know, I teach at a monastery, and it's not so funny anyway because they don't know a lot of things. Yeah. Okay, so I think. Make sure I have it clean. By the way, this is the uh, the paste that I used to put the rice paper fish print onto the canvas, mm -hmm. and it's uh, repositionable, water soluble. So you do have to be careful not to get the, the thing wet, mm -hmm. but the uh, the actual print itself is is waterproof. Mm -hmm. So careful not to get wet thing wet. Sorry. Wet thing wet. What don't you want to get wet? You don't want to get this rice paper wet oh. because it might come unglued from the canvas. Oh yeah. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming this. It says water soluble. So I'm assuming when it dries, you can still, you know, move it with water. Anyway, that's that's what I used. Okay. So now. What we're going to do is we're going to take this handy aqua rail block. Okay. And let's see. Slippery guy. Ooh. That's slippery. It is uh, beautiful. Yeah, that's it. So That'll fit on there. It's so smooth. Yeah, and we'll see if I can paint it or not. That's the question. If not, I'll use a different fish. I have another one here. And so now, I'll put a little more paint in here. Well, that's the thing that you could not use uh, sumi ink on. Say it again. We can't use the sumi ink on that one because it's too slippery. On that. No, I could. And you want me to do a sumi ink? I could no, do the sumi ink. One of them was too slippery. It was too smooth, so that oh yes, was yeah. leaving yeah. an impression. Yeah. Well, you see, this guy was done with these acrylic paints and you don't see a lot of scales right so the acrylic kind of masks the some of the the scale type texture of the of the fish so i'm going to put some uh, white in there I'm going to try using a flat brush. Let's see how that works. Yeah. Oh, and here's, here's something interesting. I get this Smithsonian catalog of classes 
they do classes um, in person or right now they're doing them online. Tomorrow morning, starting at 7 a.m. Pacific time, there is a class on Giltaku. Oh. And I'm going to be taking it. So I'm going to learn some more about this technique tomorrow morning from 7 in the morning till 10 in the morning. Um, and, and so you, I'm, I'm hoping that I can incorporate it in some of my artwork going forward. And by taking this class, I'll learn more of the techniques to be able to do that. But I thought it was kind of a coincidence that I had done the, the, the fish prints in French Polynesia, and then I got home and I opened up this catalog and there's a, <laughs> a class on fish prints. And it's not very common, right? You don't see many classes on fish prints. So it was quite a coincidence. I, I was really surprised. So do you have to belong to the society in order to take it? No, I don't belong. No, there, there are differences in price, depending on whether you're a member or not. But no, you don't have to be a member. So let me see. Maybe if I put a little water on this. I might want to zoom out just a little for this part. Alex on the camera. Fish. Zoom out. Oh, Yeah, I, go, I was going, look at it, it's not blinking. <laughs> yeah. What's the name of that fish? Was that Pompano? Pompano? I think this is the Pomfret, P-O-M-F-R-E-T. Okay. Almost sounds like French bread. Yeah. <laughs> French bread. Pomfret. Pomfret. It was like one of the images you showed of Mark Mahaffey. Yeah. Part of the head was black, and then all of a sudden it went into a red body. Uh -huh. So I wonder if he used acrylic. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah.
So I got everything. We we only yeah. see part of the fish. You only see part of the fish. Oh, okay. Can you zoom out? There you go. Okay. Now. <laughs> I wish I could put the paper on top of it, <laughs> but that's not an option. So again, we have to flip it like a pancake. <laughs> I think what I will do is put the nose down here, slowly bring it around. <laughs> slowly? <laughs> There's a will, there's a way. <laughs> it's such a pretty fish. It is. It's, it's a shame to paint it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, cool. Oh. Yeah. Whoop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now it's zoom. Can you move the cursor out of the screen here? Move that. Oh. Maybe. There you go. Okay. Okay, so it didn't totally print. The tail is good. The fins and this fin is good. I didn't get this section here. The whole head part. Sorry? It might have started drying on you a little bit. Drying up. Yeah, well, it's possible. You know, you, you kind of have to work fast. And if you're putting on multiple colors, that slows you down. So, um, and yeah, and if I was using a smaller fish, yeah. which is what that is, it works better, I think. Yeah. But still, interesting. yeah, pretty interesting. It, yeah, it's interesting. And as I do it more, of course, I'll get better at it. So, okay, it's time for a break. Yeah. <laughs> okay, welcome back. And as advertised, I would now like to try doing fish printing on fabric. So what I have here is a t-shirt that I have smoothed out on a board and hold, I'm holding it with these, these clips to keep a nice smooth surface while I do this. And I thought what I would do is try this pompano. It fits on there. And I'm going to be using fabric paints. So I got these Arteza paints. Let's see, what are, how do I do this? Um, 
I don't know the answer to that, okay? They are fabric paint, that's all I know. So they're good to use on fabric. And I got this from Michaels, okay? So uh, I'm assuming that it'll work. It's probably, it, it, it is probably an acrylic base paint, but it may have some other things put in it to make it puff up more or whatever on the fabric. Um, you do have to let this dry for six hours. And then to set it, you take a warm iron and iron the back of it. Okay. Um, you don't have to put it in vinegar, which is what you need to do with some of the, the fabric paints. Okay, so here's what they look like. And I have 18 colors here. So you see, whoop, there we go. There's one of them. That's the bright yellow. Uh, we've got a blue, purple, an orange. I should be moving over here more. Okay, orange. So I'm not, I won't be using all of these, but I will pick some that I think are appropriate for this pompano. This is pompano. Okay. And we'll see how this turns out. And again, I'm going to have to flip it over once I have the paint on it and do the, the, the imprint that way. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to just squeeze these on the fish and then use a brush to spread it out. So I think a blue would definitely be in order. There's some blue in there. There's a bit of purple. I will use those. Um, we have a silver. There's a silver. Use that. And what other color would be good? This is a pearl steel. That might be good too. So why don't we start with these and, and see how it goes? It's got beautiful shapes on there. Yeah. The yeah. Okay, so these are brand new. So I do have to go in here and take out the little yeah, cardboard good. or yeah. paper top on it. Try and do that without spilling. It has a, uh, oh, it must have uh, another, another, another layer on it here. Yeah, so there's. When I get the like, take them off, okay. Yeah, and it's brought along my trusty knife just for this purpose. I think I'm gonna have to cut this. Okay. Messy, messy. Yeah, really <laughs> okay, and I want to make sure that I get all these ready to go. If you don't mind, I'm going to take another minute or two here to use all of these. There, that one worked. Okay. Yeah. The plastic came with it. That's better. Yes. Nope. Not that one. It's like dead air on the broadcast. <laughs> 
Tell us a joke. Yeah. <laughs> I need a filler. <laughs> Somebody fill in. This one's not coming at all. Come on. There you go. That one worked too. Okay, now we're ready. Okay, so we're going to start with the blue. Nope, I won't do that. Or you not done that. Where? Not this oh. way. You had such gentle touch with the brush. Yeah. <laughs> you don't? <laughs> <laughs> you do some pretty gentle things too, as I recall. Get that again. <laughs> Sorry? Melbourne. Help myself. <laughs> You're getting better. Yeah. So you've never painted with these before? No. Okay. Do you have a water mister with you? Have a what? Um, you know, like a little spritzer, water spritzer? Yes, I do. Okay. I was just thinking, you know, like how the acrylic was drying? You just spritz it. Yeah. And then if you spritz a little bit, it might stay. It might stay wet. Uh huh. Oh, oh, I see. What you know saying. what I mean? Yeah. So it doesn't dry fast. Oh, <laughs> that's the best fix. There you go. Okay, now.
I think I got some water on the other parts of the fish. So I can blend. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, that's Looks pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. so far. I got, oh, it's mixed. Can you flap it? Flip it, I mean? <laughs> flip it? Yeah. I'm going to have to flip it. Yes, I am. Oh. Hot horrors. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I'm not going to get it perfect, obviously. So let's just try it. Yeah. Oh, wait, I want one more fin to go. Where's the no, fin? No, I don't want to do that. Let me do it in the silver. What fin? The one on the top one. On the back? This one right here. Yeah. Oh. Okay, he's out of the way. Suspense. <laughs> Ready? Uh -huh. <laughs> It looks like he's smiling. <laughs> 
Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Don't look. <laughs> oh, very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, it sort of worked. <laughs> and I could go back in and touch up. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that was the smooth fish, too. Yeah, that was the smooth fish. So it might work better with a different fish. Yeah. Okay. You have to play with it and see what works the best. Um, you can see the fins. They came out pretty well. Again, the head, not so well. Um, that's not surprising because that's a hard part yeah. of the fish, and so it doesn't it press does. in yeah. as easily. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can paint it in. And I should have worn gloves. <laughs> Didn't do it. Okay. Um, and now you're all metallic. Yes, and now I'm all metallic. Let's go party. <laughs> uh, okay. So that's fabric printing, and you want to make sure you use fabric prints to do that with. Um, and I have also these fabric pens that you can buy. So I could use these for detail work um, and to sign it if I wanted to sign it, that sort of thing, put in the eye, okay? Um, so that's what these are for. These are fabric markers, okay, again. Um, so now I'm going to have to let this dry for six hours before I touch it again. Mm -hmm. So if I undo this, see what we've got. You know how you did the um, rice paper? Yes. And you put it over the fish? Yes. I wonder if you could do that, if it would be easier to do that with the fabric. Oh, yeah. Nice. Just put something in between the layers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like what you have a board there, maybe yeah, I have some a board here. tissue paper or so it doesn't bleed to the other side. Oh, Jim, that is so cool. Oh, so there you have your t-shirt. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so yeah. show, now show it to the TV. Oops. Here. Uh, see what it looks like yeah. very cool okay okay so i think now i've got a little bit of time left I want to try another fish print with multiple fish and on different rice paper. So let me get this out of here. Get this guy out of here. OK. 
So now I'm going to use this rice paper, which has has threads in it or, or strands. Okay, so it's more textured than the other rice paper that I was using. And according to Lillian, this is hemp. Okay, it's hemp hemp fibers. So it's made from hemp. Okay. All right. So we'll put this aside. Here. Okay, and you see this is fairly big. It's like eighteen by twenty-four. Okay, so it's uh, roughly half of one of these sheets. So when I lay out the fish, I want to keep that in mind as to where I put them. So I'm are you going to do the ink? ink? I'm going to use the sumi ink. Okay. Okay. So I think it will work best on the yeah. hemp paper. Okay. So we've got a school of fish here. Okay, let me. Yeah, you need to go to yeah. the other one. They should all be heading in the right, in the same direction, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of. Position differently. Okay, and if I check that with the paper. I get a little work. Okay. Sumi ink. Are you gonna do that without gloves? I better put gloves on, hadn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. Make sure I have enough out here. Yeah, I don't want to make messy hands worse. Yeah, you just want to have those party hands. <laughs> yes. <laughs> These fish are so cool. Yes. Okay, interesting. These are the horse mackerel split fish. Take my trusty cheap brush. <laughs> Can you use the brush more than once or do you have to throw it out? Brush more than once? Yeah, can you keep that brush to use again? Oh, oh. Um, or do you have to throw I, it away? I generally throw it away just because okay, it's such a cheap brush. And yeah. You see it's kind of separating out yeah. and all that sort of thing. So um, I'll just throw it away. And here I'm not going to worry too much about the texture. I will go back and try and get rid of some of the excess ink, but I don't have a lot of time to work on this. So I'm going to do it pretty quickly here. So I have so many of these guys. And again, I'm not doing anything with the eye. I should try not to get much of the sumi ink on the back paper because that's going to show up on the rice paper when I press down on it. So I, I got a bit, maybe it'll dry by the time I put the rice paper on. Yeah, it looks like it's absorbing in. 
Yeah, it's, it's absorbing in, so hopefully it won't affect the print. Let's get off the excess. It's getting some. Maybe a little fish print on here. Okay, so now, does it matter which side? Doesn't matter. Smooth side. But can you tell the smooth side? With the smooth side. Oh, this is the smooth side. Okay. So let's do it this way. Oh, there you go. I, I didn't position it very well, but I'm trying to hurry here. The fish. <laughs> 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 yeah, this one's kind of falling off Ooh. the bottom. <laughs> Swimming away. Ooh. Ooh. Let's see how, how can I show it? Maybe not. Okay. Move these guys over. Oh, this guy in the center. And you can see the the eyes. The, the eyes definitely, and some of the scales. And the mouth. And the fins and the tails and so on. So, you know, if I were to spend a little more time on yeah. it. Uh, be a little more careful about how I put the rice paper on. But you can do multiple prints as well. Or I could do it a different way in that I could do just one fish, print it once, move it, print it again, you know, that way. So that's another way to do it. And you probably have better luck doing it that way. Uh, they, they would come out nicer, I would guess. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. So it's fun. I'm enjoying it, and yeah. that's the main idea. Yeah. And uh, happy to answer any questions that you might have either in person or online. Anything in the chat? No? No. Nope. did a great job. Very okay. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Excellent. Okay. Thanks for the challenge. Yeah. Well, I thought it would be a fun subject to, yeah, to demonstrate. Yeah, I think it's so different. Yeah. I think it's so different. Yeah, so definitely different. different and it, it's like texture in your painting. Mm -hmm. You know, you, it's one way to add texture. Yeah. And it's kind of a different kind of texture. Or it can be the main star of the show, yeah. depending on how you do it. I think you can also paint, uh, print on silk. Oh, wow. Something like the t-shirt. Uh -huh. If you paint on silk, I think the mm -hmm. color will be more spreading. Yeah, yeah. And also use a fabric dye. Yeah. Dry. Yeah. 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 If you were interested in that, Jack Hart products in the San Rafael has a variety of uh, paints for different fabrics. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, oh okay. Okay. Uh, that's the website to look at. And what's the name again? Jack Hart. Jack. Yes, okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. I'll look into it. Or if you need any information about silk or whatever, just email me. I know a lot about it. Yeah. Because you. Yeah. I also bought some of these acrylic inks. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. And I thought they might be good for the eyes. Mm -hmm. I could try putting in, you know, yeah. some of these acrylic inks for the eyes. Um, no, this, I like this one, especially the color pearlescent blue. Ooh, yeah, very nice. Good colors for, for a fish. Yeah. So they can bring out that, that part of the fish, the eye. And the eye is really important because, you know, we tend to go to eyes when we look at things. You did a great job. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
a lot of preparation. So, yeah, a lot, <laughs> a lot of work. Of work. It's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so, you know. He's going to do more after you take the workshop tomorrow. <laughs> yes, yes, right, right. Yeah, I'll learn something, hopefully, mm -hmm. and then be able to do better at it. Mm -hmm. And now I got to go home and wash these fish so I can use them tomorrow morning. <laughs> yes, I know. I want to thank my wife for, for doing the washing on these fish. <laughs> it, it takes a village. Well, thank, thank you all for coming. I think that's it. We don't have any more questions. So go out and do some fish prints. Yeah. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome.